Hope that everything goes like it should. Looks like my it is. Okay. Huh? Is my hair okay? Your hair's okay. What hair? What You're hair? looking fine. Let me. Let me. Uh, uh, <laughs> Sorry about that. <laughs> let's wait till it actually starts over here, and then I will introduce everybody so that we get a good clean start for this show. Um, let me uh, first of all uh, introduce. Let me see here. <clears throat> there we go. Uh, we got Patrick. He's over here. That's Patrick. Smile, Patrick. Yeah, they'll go those teeth. And uh, that's uh, Portland Dave. Portland Dave is, uh, you're in Portland, right? Yeah. Yeah. And uh, then there's Josh Wheeler. Josh is our, uh, our uh, political analyst and historian for the program. Uh, gosh, that sounds nice, doesn't it? And uh, let me see here. Then we got uh, we got uh, Dan Meyer. Dan is yeah, down here. I'm always smiling on my picture. Well, you yeah you you and uh, then there's Rob. Uh, he is the voice of Gabnet. How are you? That's Rob right there. And uh, there's me down here. I will always be down uh, down in the bottom here somewhere, lurking about. Anyway, let's get back to this whole thing about uh, about uh, pot. It, it, girlfriend kind of got uh, kind of interested in this whole vaping thing because she it's an interest it's an interesting delivery system. It's a more modern delivery system. People are using it for smoking. I know that. Uh, oh, hey, Miranda is calling. Hello, Miranda. Hello. Uh, uh, it, as a delivery system, it's uh, well, it, it started out to be a delivery system for smoking. And then it's been adapted, uh, making cartridges for it that have pot. Am I right about that? I mean, the, the vapes that they're using for the pot. It's right? not a cartridge necessarily. It comes in this like gooey substance. It can yeah. be liquid. Yeah. But this butane hash oil, you get more of this like gooey hash like stuff uh, substance. And you use a little metal dabber and you put it on a ceramic uh, element yeah. that heats up. And what's amazing about these vapes is that you use USB to charge them up. So you see people like in Starbucks charging their vapes up from their computer. <laughs> That's great. So, and, and how long, once you charge them, how long are they good for? I don't have a lot of experience, but mm -hmm. it seems like the life is pretty good. I mean, a couple days probably. And I mean, if you're a heavy vape user, I, if you're chronic, probably yeah. you could burn it out in a couple hours, I imagine. <laughs> but uh, I don't have, I, I think that they're pretty robust, actually. Yeah, because I'd like to know because uh, the last time, I mean, Mark isn't calling tonight. That's unusual. Oh, it must be because it's Easter. No. Uh, <laughs> The uh, um, uh, because he always is va vaping. By the way, Miranda, turn mm -hmm. on your camera. Your, Say what? It's on. Yeah, you know, we'll turn it off and on That's again. Sick. Yeah. Yeah. Sometimes. That's so weird. I know. It's a, it it happens. Skype idiosyncrasy. Yeah. They'll yeah. they'll work it look, out. It's Microsoft. They'll they'll work it out by oh I don't know the year uh, twenty twenty. <laughs> um. But anyway, where was I? Oh yeah. Um. Um. The, the 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 whole idea i'd love to ask mark about it because he does uh, vape when he smokes um and uh, uh we get an idea of how long these things last and so on anybody oh wait a minute miranda you, you well, you're waving your hand dave dave was talking about uh not knowing how much you're getting and and everything and at least here in california uh, when you go to a medical dispensary, they are required to disclose uh, the amount. Uh, you know, there'll be a little label on it that actually tells you how much is how much is in it. Yeah. Uh, you mean, in other words, the content. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah, but what if the person making the brownie is like all high? And you if you're gonna, if, well, if you're gonna make it yourself, then it's up to you to be responsible enough to to know how much to put into it. Yeah. 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 I just think that this is the angle because we, I think, and I don't know if there's validity to it, but if you Google it in Colorado, somebody just went bonkers after on edibles and just killed somebody. So it's these sort of stories that will damage in terms of this is why Jerry Brown, as liberal as he, well, he's not even liberal. He's like apolitical now. He's just like, we're going to try to do the right thing, I think. So he's really hard to pin down. But I, I really do believe there is some credence to let's let Colorado and Washington, let's see how it works, give them a little bit of time. Because yeah. I can tell you there are some aspects, even though I am pro pot, I think there's some stuff to sort out. Yeah. 
Um, Charlene, are you there? Yeah, I'm there, Alex. Charlene, you had some horrible random sound going on. So if it happens again, I'm going to have to hang up on you, okay? Okay, no, I understand. I, in fact, I don't even know where you are. You sound terrible tonight. Really? Uh, yeah. In a tunnel? Yeah, she sounds like she's in a tunnel somewhere. <laughs> I'm in the Lincoln Tunnel. Yeah. Uh, you're in the Lincoln Tunnel? No. Vacant. Uh, oh, vacant tunnel. Um, uh, uh, it, it, there's always somebody, though, trying to create a buzzkill, as I said before, about this stuff. You know, we have been doing uh, research on marijuana and studies since the India, Indian, uh, what is it, the India Hemp Commission. Uh, back in, uh, I think it was one, uh, 1906, where they determined that hemp wasn't dangerous. And, and ever since then, they always keep saying, well, you know, we don't have enough information yet. I mean, how much longer than over a century of studies do we need to know this stuff really isn't dangerous? I don't think there's so much a danger when you smoke it. It's more on the edible side. I know out at Burning Man, I had a bad experience. And uh, what was your bad experience? Well, it was about too, too many three ugly, in the morning. Too many ugly naked They have other cars around. out there. So we had the love boat. My friends had converted this van into a giant boat. And uh, about three in the morning, I consumed a brownie and it was just way too much. And about an hour and a half later, I was just con shivering uncontrollably. And uh, it was just one of the most miserable experiences well, I did had you, that uh, rapid now, heartbeat. Okay, let me ask you this. Do you think maybe it was laced with something? No, this is common uh, with uh, marijuana brownies. There's a story in the Daily Cal from yeah. Berkeley from about three years ago where two English professors bought at this bake sale fundraiser. They didn't read the sign and it said pot brownies. They ended up in the hospital. Mm -hmm. So that's the issue with the edibles, just that one, you got to be really careful about, you know, brownie looks enticing, you know, to a two-year-old, you know, you leave the brownie around, the two-year-old has no idea it's laced with, with THC. It just looks yummy. Yeah, so, or, or, or even worse, a dog could see it and think it was his own poop. Well, the dog would die from the chocolate then. The dog would, like, get the marijuana buzz and then die, kick out. So it would be, like, the best of both worlds. <laughs> something like that, Doug. Yes, yeah, something like that. You know what? Last night we were talking about executions. That sounds like a good way to go. <laughs> and then you see I brought up Mount Everest, and then there was an avalanche. And all these guides were killed. Like 19 yeah, people or something? I don't know. I, I feel hey, awful. Can, can I just say something? How many kids are dead they, so far in that um, in that uh, ferry crash? Something like, a couple hundred. Is yeah. it is it couple, a couple hundred? It has, it's yeah. like only reported like 200 are missing, but like 20 or 30 are dead. Confirmed but you know, dead. Okay, so it's go, it's going to go to over, over 200 dead. Yeah, you, but they know where it's at. You had how, how much? <laughs> Right, so there's no reason to report on it. So same with Mount Everest. They know where Mount, where Mount Everest is. So anyway, <laughs> so. don't you think they could have gotten like a, some type of big ship over there as long as it's been underwater and like just lifted up? I, I mean, I don't know. I mean, I'm, I'm but, not an engineer. No, but you have to. Use, you know, you have to get the stuff. Look, you remember that uh, cruise ship that uh, that went uh, si yeah. sideways uh, down in uh, South? Oh, where Italy. was it? Good yeah. point. Tilly Laura. How? Uh, yeah. Uh, yeah. Not the Killing no, Laura. Uh, it reason, was another one of those. Sorry. It was another one of those cruise yeah. ships where you Costa. either where you, where you Costa, either Costa, yeah, sorry. where you either Costa, sink or get yeah. Legionnaire's disease. You know, and it <laughs> tipped over. How long was that thing tipped over before they could write it up? It took forever. It was so, a tourist attraction. So what do you think, Doug? They're just going to drive over there with a boat and say, oh, let's pull that no, back I, up I again. I made a really dumb statement. That's what I think. But well, anyway. that's not the first time. But anyway. <laughs> I tell you, the contract, though, to, to go find that thing is, like, never-ending, though. So that's a good thing to, like, sink your teeth into. So to speak. Uh, so here, here's the deal. You got that that's maybe 200 people. You got the uh, – how many on the airline? 300 plus. 300 plus people yeah. dead on that one. You got uh, how many people dead were dead at Fort Hood between the two Fort Hood, Hood shootings? Something like 20 people or something? Yeah, somewhere around that. Boston, with just three people, kind of looks wimpy, doesn't yeah. it? Yeah. <laughs> I mean, they were kids, but it's still wimpy by comparison, and they don't stop talking about that thing. Right. 
you know? I made, that, I made that point uh, right when it happened. I, I said, odds are there were more people probably killed that day in Boston through gang violence, and I don't know for sure, maybe I'm wrong, yeah. than were killed at the marathon. But at the same time, since it was Islamic terrorists, then it's a, it's a much more of a problem because the Islamic terrorists. Probably uh, cop violence. What? Cops killing civilians. Cops killing civilians? Where? Wait a minute. I mean, that just happens everywhere, pretty much. I'm just saying. You know, you talk about. Yeah, but I'm talking. Oh, I'm talking about all more, these tragedies. More often than the all Boston the, bombing. All, yeah, all these saying. tragedies yeah. that happened, and the Boston bombing, by comparison, was minor. I mean, yeah. come on, all of them pale in comparison to uh, 9/11, well, and 9/11 and... uh, uh, pales in comparison to the Bhopal chemical factory explosion. Yeah. That's Many like years like 50, ago, 25,000 people dead. Oh, yeah. I guess this time that happened. It happened during the Boston Marathon, you know, a big annual event, you know. It's sort of like yeah, it's, well, every, it, was, it was done for, for publicity and for show, and they got the publicity. And how so, about Waspy overtone to it? Come on, it did cut across. I think they got to know, you know, just like who, who was the, the blonde girl who went missing down uh, in Latin America? You know, if that were an African-American or a Mexican girl, there would have oh, been no coverage of it. Yeah. You know, I think the news, they got all their research and they know which stories resonate. Well, and yeah, well, I mean, it. whenever there's like a kidnapped girl, it's yeah. never like some ugly Hispanic kid. Yeah. You know? Uh, it's always some cutie pie that they can put some on the front page of the blonde, paper and say, yeah. Oh, she's gone. She's so adorable. Where is I she? Mean, yeah. well, the, the, the classic thing is what the, the Boulder case uh, with the little child. John uh, Ramsey? Yeah. Oh, yeah. I mean, this, how much coverage? How many hours of coverage? How many lines of news Oh, and it been still goes on. Years. That year. And every year or so, they bring up another story about John Bonet Ramsey and what could have happened and so on. Then the mother died. So that's one less suspect around, you know. Uh, they because cleared the parents, though. They, they cleared the parents, but the thing people don't realize, the parents are always the first suspects. Right. You know, it's just they, they always start there. And they lawyered up really good, too. They did lawyer up good, but they had to. I mean, everybody was out to get them. Uh, and But, you know, I mean, who, who knows what happened in that case? I don't think we're ever going to find out at this point. Uh, yeah, and what's, what, what I think is pathetic about it is that the media uses this to make money, and it's free. I mean, when they get the streams, the court streams, they oh, just yeah, basically it's all free. headline it's news all free. takes it. Yeah. And builds content around it and then sells commercials. Well, it's so uh, exploited. Uh, uh, Rob used to work for Court TV, right, Rob? Yep. Mm -hmm. And they made the fortune off of using what essentially is found footage. You know, well, all those trials but, they would cover and stuff. They didn't pay for that, did they? But we didn't but we didn't sensationalize trials. We were not yeah, allowed but, to sensationalize trials. What do you mean not sensationalize them? Isn't well, just broadcasting we, them as a uh, You broadcast as a the trial. You broadcast yeah. the trial. When the trial goes into a break or lunch or at the end of the day, you mm -hmm. report the news. If you can't report, if you couldn't uh, attribute something you said to somebody who said it, mm -hmm. you couldn't say it. Right. There was no such thing as, uh, you know, you could have a pundit on to discuss the trial, but nobody right. would, you know, you, I watched Nancy Grace and I worked with her at Court TV. Ugh. She would not have gotten away with what God she gets away you. with now. So who owned, when you work there, I mean, I know now it's what, it, within the Time, Time Warner. Warner. Was well, it Time no Warner? Warner. It's, it's, C, it's CNN. When I, I started there, it was just Steve Brill. He was the person who uh, right. was the yeah. chief editor and all that. And then he got into trouble by uh, taking money from Time Warner and NBC. And eventually they squeezed them out. They, yeah. they owned the the, uh, the lion's share of the stock and they... Uh, they pushed him to the door. Right. Uh, so uh, Doug, happens, Doug, like you have... Intentions uh, are over uh, wait a minute. Hold on a second. By corporate America. Doug if having... anybody remembers the first day of the O.J. Simpson trial, yeah. we, uh, uh, we, by mistake, showed a juror on camera. We were, you know, we had one camera in the courtroom, and you're moving that camera around, and yeah. we, uh, the very first day of the trial, we got a juror on. Steve Brill came down. He was... He was livid, but he came down. He sat on the set and apologized to the country. Wow! Hey, well, that's listen, the kind listen, of guy he was. There was no, there was no. Yeah. He, he, you know, if you make a mistake, you fess up. 
and there's none of this uh, okay. sensationalism. Well, let me just jump in here because uh, uh, Doug has had his arm raised so long he's losing all feeling to his lower part of his body, and we wouldn't <laughs> want that to happen. Yeah, because I'm standing too. That doesn't help. Yeah. No, you're talking about John Bonet, and you know, and you brought up Alex that it really has been going for years. And I remember the last two stories concerning John Bonet was there was a guy that was like overseas who was about to get sentenced to, I don't know, you know, some harsh prison sentence. Yeah. And he claimed that he killed John Bonet. Right. So sort of like they shipped him over to the United States of America. And it was like they fed him. I, hey. <laughs> they fed yeah, him. Just, they took good like, care of him. Yeah. yeah and then was, I, I think there was you know, somebody came out with some book pretty much saying it was the mother who did it. Out of jealousy or something like that, or out of envy. How do you how how are you jealous of your like what is six year old kid? Well, how old was John Bonet Ramsey when she went? I think yeah, you're like I think six. you're right, six or seven. She I mean, you, you know, you know what, but, but you know, you know what bothers me about that whole case is that nobody ever brought up and no and, and how what a terrible thing that is to do to a kid. Oh, it was brought up. You know, that, 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 was that sexualizing of a six-year-old or a five-year-old. Yeah, you know? I think probably what happened is they were maybe negligent. Mm -hmm. I think that my, my best guess is they were negligent and too embarrassed that something happened. They didn't look after her, something, and so they just covered it up because you could tell by their lifestyle, obviously, they're very concerned about image. So that's... The my... mother is dead, right? Uh, didn't she die or something? Yeah, yeah the mother died. Uh, a while well, back. Probably all the stress keeping it in. So yeah. Uh, uh, but, uh, you know, but uh, but I uh, I just, uh, nobody ever made a big deal about the, the sexualizing of these kids and what they do with them. I mean, I'm even upset with Honey Boo Boo, you know? Did you see Bad Grandpa? Well, colors and tiaras. The whole show is, it wouldn't exist if it wasn't for the trial. Like dance mom and that's it. Yeah, well, I mean, yeah. I, th I think it's I think it's sick to take Sorry, care of that. Sorry, I stepped on kid. Doug there. Yeah, you, 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 you wouldn't want to do that. I have a camera on order from Amazon, I swear to God. Hey, do I you really? My hands, so anyway. <laughs> is it coming by drone? At la yes. At, at <laughs> last, <laughs> you see, to everybody who's now. listening, watching the show, that's Dan right there. And uh, that's the only picture we've ever seen of this guy. Which is a selfie Man, taken in a car, and it's the worst selfie in the history of mankind. <laughs> wow, he's driving. Really? It's like That's he didn't get in a wreck. I, I had to send a uh, oh, screen capture to Charlene last night of Charlie. Did you get that, Charlene? Yeah, yeah, it was good. Uh, oh, he oh, looked a lot like his picture, though. Yeah. Uh, 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 yeah. By the way, everybody applaud. We have a full house right now. So, you know. Nobody else can call, or if they call, I will have to hang up on them. Uh, uh, but anyway, um, as long as we got you on, Mark, we were talking earlier about vaping, because you vape. Yeah, right? I guess that's what they call it now. Yeah. Uh, uh, do you, have you ever vaped a pot in there? Or... No, and I think I've told you why, which, um, you know, A, number one, it's where I live, and number two, when they can come out with the street version street weed version of vaping then i might be interested oh so in other words where you could take street weed put it into the uh, into the vaporizer and have it work yeah can't you do that, that? aren't there somewhere you can you make those <laughs> they, really they're it's, it, it yes. would be more of a standalone is that well no they make one they're va vaporized oh, bongs actually aren't they yeah. what is that yeah sort of yeah. The vaporized they, bombs. They make one, though, that actually the internals, you can uh, take out a piece. So you yeah. can either do liquid yeah. or you could do the hash or weed. But I find that the weed ends up clogging it up. But I just saw this one made in Portland that they actually have the chamber yeah. is wood with a piece of glass and then the elements. Mm -hmm. And so it actually gives much more room for the shake. And uh, I tested it out and it worked quite well. So, uh, I, 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 Four I, times have changed I would since my alligator week. clip. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Uh, uh, it, uh, um, yeah. By the way, let me just uh, say to the people who are watching this on live stream and wondering what this is all about. This is a thing we do, uh, called, uh, um, um, GabNet. Uh, Great American Broadcast Network, and we do it. Uh, you can go to gabroadcaster.com, and you can find out what it's all about. And we do we do a talk show with what we call a citizens panel, and here they are. And let me tell you who they are. 
First of all, over here, the lovely and attractive Portland Dave from Portland. Or maybe he's from Dave. I have no idea. Yeah. <laughs> His name might be Portland, and he might be from Dave. Dan Meyer, who is uh, the uh, biggest selfie in, of all time. Uh, yeah. Mark Thorner, who's down there in Naples, Probably Florida. Charlene Martinez, who is uh, hanging out in New Jersey, for which we feel very sorry for. Uh, Doug Dupuy. Uh, he's, here's my vapor right here. Do you have a vapor? Is that a vapor? It, it, it's a what? A one hitter. What's a one hitter? Like one oh, oh wait a minute! Now everybody's pulling out their vapor. Well, we can do this because we're doing the TV thing tonight, so you can it, you can show and tell. And then over here is that's that's Josh Wheeler. Uh, he hasn't joined in yet because uh, he keeps quiet until he you know has something he wants to say. And probably off screen, he's watching eight screens of baseball. Mm -hmm. Am I right about that, Josh? Mm-hmm. Yeah. <laughs> There's your answer. They have other I'm things. Jealous to... of his setup. Really, Miranda is uh, down there in uh, Southern California. Whereabouts mm -hmm. again? Anaheim. Disneyland. Disneyland. <laughs> you live in Disneyland. Oh, yeah, Disneyland took over the city a long time ago. Yeah, the Pirates of the Caribbean <laughs> goes through her living room. Can uh, you see the Matterhorn from your place? <laughs> no, but I actually can see. I, I can walk outside my door and see Angel Stadium. Oh, okay. Nice. Nice. They won, by the way. Like, <laughs> uh, um, let me see here and then there's a uh, patrick patrick's out there in wisconsin uh and uh, uh uh i did mention you doug so you can wave yeah no, i was waving back at patrick oh i see and uh, I, yeah he can see you wave back at him uh rob patrick. rob is our uh is is actually the voice of gabnet so you know uh, and what you might do is call all your friends and tell them uh, you're watching. What happens is I can see how many people are listening to the program and how many people are watching it. And anytime we go to the video, the listening goes down because everybody immediately goes to the to uh, uh, to live stream to see what everybody looks like. Did I miss anybody here? Who? No. Okay, I got everybody. All right. And so that that's how we play our little game. And if uh, well, we can't take any more callers right now. But if you uh, ever want to call. Uh, you can do so by uh, using Skype and uh, Great American Broadcast. Uh, the Great American Broadcast is the uh, is the handle that we use. Uh, what were you going thumbs up for, Rob? I was looking at his uh, little setup there, Portland yeah. Dave. Oh, okay, USB Portland Dave. Connector. Now this is show and tell tonight because we got the TV. Oh, there is the USB port. Yeah. And you and you 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 plug it into the. So into great. So after you charge it. Yeah. Then you put on. This thing, which has the element, yeah, and so it converts the electricity to heat, yeah, and so you just put a little dab in here, a, a dab and of then what? It heats it up. A dab of what? How long does so it take to heat it up? Really quickly. It, and you you do pot in that? Do you do marijuana in that? Uh, it's not legal in the state. Of, no, I have a prescription, so yes, I do. <laughs> and you find this everywhere. In L.A., you, you go into clubs and the Hollywood people. I was yeah. there, Catherine Heigl, right in the middle of a non-smoking place. She's watching her, her husband, Josh Ritter, perform. Really? It, and it doesn't really smell. You don't get that uh, really pungent well, marijuana yeah, that, smell. That's kind of good because then, then people aren't going to get a secondary high who don't want to get high. Because girlfriend always says to me, here, you want to hit? And I go, nah, because uh, especially if I'm going to go do a show, I mean, I would be no good for this show if I did some pot because I become very withdrawn and scattered and all of that. So I go, well, no, uh, but uh, that, now she starts smoking, right. and of course, I'm, I'm breathing it in, <laughs> you know. And, and uh, so secondhand smoke on this deal, that, that's always been my big question about marijuana and the should people be very careful about their secondhand smoke? And if this eliminates the secondhand smoke, then it's a perfect uh, delivery system. Well, it does with the uh, regular tobacco. I, I vape myself. I'm in a non-smoking house now, and uh, yeah. you know it's perfectly fine. Now, if somebody uh, had a non you, uh, you say your apartments are non-smoking? I moved into a non-smoking house with my family since I moved in with my okay. family a couple weeks ago. Okay, so no, suppose you're -smoking, suppose so. you're a no smoke, but suppose you're a smoker, and you vape as a method of smoking. Is that going to be okay? 
Yeah, I'm doing it right now. Yeah. So yeah, I because it, it doesn't it doesn't have any odor, doesn't have any secondhand smell. It doesn't smell like now cigarettes the question anywhere. is let, let's it smells like cigarettes in my car because I'll still smoke a cigarette in my car now and then. But but forget <laughs> about for a moment about uh, the marijuana delivery of this, but the nicotine delivery of this. Mm -hmm. Are there any inherent dangers in it, or is it better for you this way? Well, actually, kind of funny. You were talking about you were at the doctor today. I was at the doctor today as well, and I and I told her about that. And and uh, the only thing that she brought up is make sure and keep it away from kids, because they can drink it and like die. Oh, if really? They drink the liquid. Oh, they but drink in, the liquid. Yeah. Yeah, because they have some of it in fruity flavors. I don't know who's going to want to smoke a watermelon cigarette, but nonetheless, they have them. Didn't they, didn't they come out with flavored cigarettes a while back and people were really pissed off about this because it, it seemed like it was trying to appeal to children? Yeah, I think I maybe they did. But, didn't uh, camels, like, have different flavors yeah. and stuff? I mean, it's been so I long since I've... cool was. Huh? I thought that's what cool cigarettes were. No, cools were just menthol. And no, there, there were any number sense. of different brands that had a menthol also, version. Also, blunts with uh, uh, paper for rolling blunts. A lot of flavors now. The, the rolling papers yeah. had flavors. Yeah. I, Apple, I didn't remember. Grape. That. Yeah, yeah. Flavored papers are pretty common now. No, you, yeah. oh really? Now is there? Uh, my favorite paper was always Easy Wider, mainly because I could really. Now you're you're behind the times now. The brothers they get these wraps. Yeah. I mean, you know, get this pot, and then you have this like pungent. Yeah. I, I mean, every time I'm like, <laughs> one. It's like <laughs> no, 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 no. But, but, but easy, easy, wider made it easier for you to roll them yeah, because I agree. in the old days, in order to do a decent joint, you had to do what we called a two paper joint, and you'd have to hey. lick the sure. lick the paper and then stick two of them together. So you had a, a and what easy wider did was said you don't have to lick and put two of them together. We put we've cut them that big. Yeah, and that lines. allowed you that allowed you enough enough, enough space to do a good roll. Or whatever they call them. What? One point twice. Hey, remember there was a company that had like a built-in roach clip in the rolling papers, like a little thin wire. So when it burned down, you had like a little roach clip. I've there. seen you those. Mm -hmm. Yeah. You used to use those all the isn't time. Isn't technology wonderful? Yeah. Do you guys remember the proto pipe? The proto pipe. Nope. Yeah, it was this metal Never. pipe that was supposed to be really cleanable, and had, all the parts came apart. But the problem was, is you used it for maybe two weeks, and the resin got in everywhere, and you would get like each part like ten percent the way out, and would get stuck, and it would basically very high, very expensive, and just become useless. Mark, you know about that? Well, I, I don't know if this was the pipe that cartoonist and illustrator Larry Todd used to make, which was supposed to be the ultimate pot pipe. It was looked like a piece of art it was like this beautifully machined piece of brass mm -hmm. i don't know if it had that problem or not but it was just cool that the guy that drew the underground comic book called dr atomic created this beautiful pipe that worked well i mean who who why wouldn't somebody who's an artist create a beautiful pipe well you know but uh i had a penis pipe once <laughs> Mm. <laughs> yeah, did you pull that out the night that you got the blowjob? No, 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 no. <laughs> I was like, <laughs> <laughs> you guys celebrated afterwards? You were no, like, I, oh, I, thanks I, for the two I, week blowjob. I, I, I got I, I this pipe. I've been waiting to break this out. I, I practiced I for it that night fez, with this pipe. But it's you? What? Sorry. <laughs> I, I know I don't want to talk too much about Sirius XM, but since you went off the air in the morning, I started listening to Ron and Fez because there's really nothing else out there. Yeah. And is this Fez guy for real? Is this a joke? What, what's the story with this I've dude? Never, you know I never met Ron and Fez? Never met them because they they work the afternoons or something at one yeah, point. Yeah, they do. And and so I never, I never met them, you know. Uh, that happens at radio stations. I had people, I worked at radio stations where I never met the evening guy. You know, the guy was on at six at night or something. I worked hey. in that building for three years while you were there. Two of those years you were there, and I never ran into you there because you were there early in the morning, and I would never get there till 6.30 at night. Right, exactly. So, there, you know, there's a whole, in a radio station, there were always several different social groups, and they were always based on, on day parts. So maybe yeah. the Christmas party is the only time that you guys are all together? That, that's about the only time, yeah. 
and then you're glad that's the only time. <laughs> yeah, they're, they're <laughs> just awful. <laughs> Because really it, that what are what is a radio industry Christmas party like? A radio industry Christmas it depends on the on the on the place. Uh, Sirius quit really holding Christmas parties because they got when they started going broke they got really cheap, and then when they started making a fortune again they still stayed cheap. So every year they hold a uh, they bring some I don't know pizzas in and have them in the lobby and that's their <laughs> idea of a Christmas party. You want you want me to tell you the, I'll tell you the most pathetic Christmas party I've ever been to though for a radio station. I was working at WMCA in New York, and the place was owned by a guy by the name of R. Peter Strauss. And uh, for for just a, a historical perspective, his grandparents were the Strausses who died on the Titanic. And, and I just kind of said, you know, it's just too bad that they didn't die on the Titanic before having kids. Then I wouldn't have to put up with this son of a bitch. <laughs> anyway, he was married to this wife, and she, her father, owned the New York Times. I mean, this is royalty, right? Is that yeah. Muriel? Yeah. Muriel? No, that was uh, Ellen Strauss. Ruth? Ellen Ruth? Strauss. Oh, uh, Ellen, well, Ellen Salzberger was her maiden name. And... Um, uh, they, they, somebody once referred to her as the Ayatollah of New York broadcasting. Uh, and uh, they were, they had this attitude that we were, she referred to all the people that worked for her as the little people. Okay, I'll Wizard give you an idea. Huh? Wizard of Oz reference? Uh, uh, no. <laughs> no. <laughs> <laughs> but and 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 uh, their idea of a Christmas party was this: everybody come into our office. We have some liquor here that we keep in our office for our own personal stash. Everybody have one drink and leave. That was their <laughs> Christmas party. Oh my God! And I mean, it was pathetic. So one year, all these people, these poor downtrodden people, are working for the Strausses, right? go, we're going to hold our own party. And they tried to hold a party at a local bar, and they were all so depressed. It was the most depressing <laughs> Christmas party I've ever been to. I mean, they're at this Christmas party crying. We didn't get a raise this year. We didn't get a bonus, you know. And it was just it was just absolutely depressing. pathetic. Yeah. Wow. But these people were just, uh, these, these people were the worst. He, she died. And then he went on and married, you ready for this? Monica Lewinsky's mother. Oh, wow. oh my goodness. Yeah, so, so he became he became Monica too. Lewinsky's stepfather. <laughs> so that's how she got the, yeah. the He wasn't as bad as the stretch, Dan. He wasn't as bad as the wife was though. The wife was pretty bad, all things you considered. Did. I read a while, I don't know, a couple of months ago, I was surprised that Lady Bird Johnson was a, a broadcasting magnet, that she acquired all of these uh, so she stations. Had a, she had a, no, she had a radio station in, uh, I'm trying to remember the town in Texas, small town, small town in Texas. It was called w, uh, uh, WLBJ. Uh, and uh, uh, I think she bought some other radio stations as time went on. Because it, it ended up when she passed away that those stations, she still maintained her interest and it was worth a sizable fortune. I was, I, I never knew about that. I thought that was kind of a cool story. Yeah, yeah. Uh, but but uh, it, 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 it was a very, uh, um, uh, I always, I always kind of liked her for some reason. She had... She was classy. I, I always liked the Johnsons. But the, 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 here we go, Josh. Here's something you can sink your teeth into. What? I'm looking at football, baseball. Leave me alone. Historians uh, love baseball. Uh, now you talk about Johnsons. <laughs> no, we were talking. I was talking about uh, Lyndon Johnson. We were talking about Lady Bird, and I thought she was pretty much a class act. What do you think, looking on her historically? Are you there? He froze. <laughs> He's can you hear me? Oh, yeah, I can hear. You. I can hear you. You froze, but I can hear you. Okay, yeah, you were breaking up really bad, so I didn't get like the last. Well, what 15, I was saying is, is, I just said that I kind of like Lady Bird Johnson because I thought she was kind of a class act. Yeah, she's a nice lady, as far as, as far as I've always heard. Um, she's not very well covered, you know. There's not a whole lot out there on her. I mean, there's a there's a biography on every first lady, and uh, there's 
there's you know decent information, but she she hasn't really been studied in depth the way some of the others have. But from all I've ever seen, she was she was a pretty good lady. Aren't the first ladies today though a lot more involved in in being high profile than the first ladies were then? They kind of just backed off a bit and just became the dutiful wife. Um, I mean Eleanor Roosevelt. Yeah, was with the only exceptions one. here and there. Yeah. yeah, Eleanor Roosevelt was an exception. She kind of started the whole thing, and then Jackie Kennedy. Well, Jackie, Jackie right. still was playing the dutiful wife, you know. Here's sure, the, but it, she was being all glamorous and everything. I, I well, think re, of recent, uh, Nancy, I think, was only one to maintain like consistent presence. I think both Hillary and Michelle Obama they tried to exert some force <laughs> at the beginning and were kind of beaten down and right. became more passive, well, I think. Nancy Reagan ran the country in the end, didn't yeah. she? Oh, well, Pat, yeah. Pat, yeah, Pat, he did. did. Would you well, say... Well, yeah, would, Bill, would, even Bill Clinton said you, you have like a co-presidency here with his wife. Yeah, so. yeah but you, we're talking about more recent times. I'm talking about the days with, uh, with uh, Mamie Eisenhower and Lady Bird Johnson Dolly and uh, Pat Nixon. Actually, though, I just, I read the... Uh, uh, the John Adams uh, uh, biography and his wife Abigail was actually maybe not as present, but in terms of behind the scenes of actually like breaking down stuff philosophically and yeah. analytically, she was actually quite quite involved, and I was surprised about that. Yeah, yeah. Uh, I, I, I have a suggestion because. Uh, one thing I used to really like about uh, your show is you would read books when you were... Oops, oh, wait a minute. Hold on a second. Josh has to call me back. I'm, uh, uh, hold on, folks. I, I screwed up here. Uh, just a moment. Hold on. We, we lost Josh there for a second. He's got to call back. I, I hit the wrong button here to add him to the group. And, and... Yeah, I got to like, put on hold. Huh. For a second. Yeah, I know because I went. Oh, I actually here we go. I go plus, and now yeah, we get. I, I had that problem too for a while, hitting the wrong thing, disconnecting when yeah. I just meant to mute my microphone. Yeah. But the books, like when you read about uh, prohibition, and you come in and talk about it, yeah. maybe down the line we could do some sort of book thing where to get Josh involved, we read something, and we could then talk about mm, it, and yeah, those who don't yeah. read about it don't have to talk, but mm -hmm. those who do, mm -hmm. and Josh can, you know, kind of be more as a pardon professor me, pardon and, me, and but, lead us but, through. Uh, I, I don't want to be rude here, but didn't Oprah try that? Yeah, Josh, we learned. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. But, um... I don't, so, uh, I don't know what happened. Read a book, so I don't know what happened with that. I'll read his book. Okay. Anyway, what are you going to say, Josh? <laughs> I, don't, I don't know what happened with the connection, and everything there, but we'll, I'll just get back on where we were. Um, you know, first ladies have been involved, I think more more than people realize in the past. I mean, um, you know, some people said Dolly Madison. She she had you know some outside involvement, but I mean, there has been some direct involvement by some first ladies over the year. I mean. Abigail Adams was perhaps, perhaps John Adams' John. closest advisor, mm -hmm. um, and you know, I mean, his closest counsel. Um, trying to think of some other uh, pointed examples here. Andrew Jackson's wife Rachel um, caused him a lot of problems during his presidency, but uh, he looked to her among all other people. Um, you know. Uh, you yeah, guys mentioned yeah, it, how it, you think it, Nancy Reagan might have run the government. I, I don't think that she did. But I can tell you that Edith Wilson, Woodrow Wilson's wife, she, she didn't run the government for the last couple of months after he, uh, President Wilson had had, had had his stroke. But she did see to it that Woodrow Wilson didn't really run the government <laughs> because she felt that the stress was detrimental to his health, rightly so, because it was. He had just had a massive stroke. Mm -hmm. And she kept almost everyone from seeing him. To the point that, uh, you know, newspapers and Congress people um, were literally showing up demanding to see the president because they wanted proof of life, um, you know, because there was there was heavy innuendo that that he he was dead or he was completely incapacitated. Um, you know, Eleanor Roosevelt is probably a pretty good example, although. You know, her and FDR had a really nice relationship, and I think there was some love there. But, you know, her and FDR did not really have the relationship that I think people 
now think that they did. They, well, they were not really. They have, she, she was a lesbian. Yeah. Um, she was bisexual. We know that she had a lesbian lover named Lorena Hickok, who yeah. was a, a reporter, yeah. who she um, who worked for the administration, and um, FDR kept kept a, a, a woman that he loved uh, named Lucy Hayes. Um, In fact, she was with him when he died, wasn't she? Right. She was with him when he died. And uh, down in uh, down FDR in Hot and Elnor's FDR and Elnor's relationship was actually, from my understanding, is was pretty good up until the time that she realized that Lucy Hayes was not just another one of his mistresses. And from that point forward, it was a relationship of uh, what's a good way to say uh, beneficial circumstances for both parties. Yeah, and and that was it. Uh, but but the question here is, um, um, she she had this uh, this relationship with this woman, and yet, you know, in this day and age, do you realize what would happen if we had a first lady who was having a say a a, a, a tryst with another woman, uh, or oh, or even a it. president who was having a tryst like F, a, a FDR was having. Uh, mm -hmm. With his with his girlfriend, do you do you realize what the press would do with that? They found out oh. Michelle Obama had a gay relationship somewhere. Well, not you only know. that, but and and this one here, we know about well, that well, one. Wait a minute, wait a minute, wait a minute, wait a minute. I, I see a hand been raised here, but there. Are... I mean, what's uh, that? Uh, 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 Miranda wanted <laughs> to say something here. Oh, go I ahead. I was just going to say it sounds like a plot point on Scandal. <laughs> <Yes>. <laughs> But I'm say that's some pretty steamy sex there with well, that's, Kerry Washington. They, that's good stuff. Well, that's where this this kind of comes into that too. Is what I was going to say was this one here has never been been proven, but has been heavily, uh, you know, kind of put out there by even some reputable historians throughout the years that she also had mm -hmm. uh, a um, a typical affair with, and I can't remember his name. But with the man that was her uh, assigned bodyguard, um, it, I don't. It wasn't called the Secret Service then. I don't remember what it was called. But she had a, a bodyguard that was assigned to her, who had been with FDR for a while and was moved to her detail, and uh, they were always together, even um, when he was off duty. And you know, people thought it was just out of a devotion to the Roosevelts, but some people think it was more than that. Yeah, what I think this stuff must be going on because of the scandals that have happened within the Secret Service. I think. Given the position that they have, the only way that they would have been like comfortable making that decision to hit up the prostitutes down in Colombia and then after that have more problems is the fact that they have seen stuff from their bosses that they've been sworn to secrecy to. And I, I have, that's always the link that I've drawn is that the only reason why they would act like that is because what they observed was, you know, not, maybe not as egregious as that, but definitely stuff's going on that they're seeing that they can't tell anybody. Well, I mean, they 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 they, they were worried. I th I think they were worried with uh, with uh, those guys in Colombia that you know you get a little high and you get a little drunk and you then have a prostitute and if the prostitute is somehow uh, a uh, uh, let's say a spy for the Colombian government you might start spilling some beans that can then be used against the United States i mean uh, they they that's what they didn't want going on down there on the other hand they should have had some, they should, what the united states should have done was supply approved hookers for these guys yeah. because if that kind of thing was going to go on, uh, then uh, surely uh, you should make sure you have control over the situation. Doug heard the word hooker. Doug, <laughs> uh, <laughs> before hookers, I'm going to hookers. But I heard like lesbians first. I'm like picturing either you know, Michelle and uh, Oprah or Michelle. <laughs> You know something? Look, or, or, or uh, whoopee. Let's be very I'm honest sure. about it. If, if you, I agree with you. Let, yeah, let's they, assume they for a moment. Professional call the girls. Yeah. To get okay. Aren't going to spill secrets ever. But let's assume for a moment that Oprah and 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 Michelle would have the ability to have a relationship together. Do you really think Michelle would want Oprah? 
And how do you no, think Alex Bowman hey, 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 yeah. I mean, I, 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 oh, here, here we go. <laughs> Miranda. Uh, Oprah's more powerful than, you know, the president. So, yeah. Hold okay. on, Doug. I'm going to pull a you and cut you off. And you uh -huh. get an orgasm. And you get an orgasm. <laughs> and you get an orgasm. Everybody. Uh -huh. Everybody gets an orgasm. <laughs> <laughs> I'm acting this season like serious, you know, you know, um, you know, sitting. And... <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Oh uh, cool. yes, I Patrick. Air and stuff like that. It's just, uh, uh... You you just said we should supply the hookers to the. <laughs> Did I just explode your brain again? Uh yeah, because I'm fucking paying taxes. <laughs> and you know what? Oh, please. They don't get fucking hookers. They get Your fucking tax stuff. dollars. My tax dollars go to pay for war. My and tax dollars. Fucking, uh, radio, then that's it. If they want a hooker, it's up to them. And then if they fuck up, they get fired. Exactly, because they worked 20 years at the Secret Service. I have a, my next door neighbors work for the FBI. Uh, the wife, she was Secret Service for Bill Clinton. She started at 21. She was 35. Six years later, retired. So to get full retirement after 20 years, you gotta earn that shit. And I, I, knew I agree with Patrick. Service. And it was like these people. It was like when you find out, it's like these guys are in a secret service. You gotta be fucking kidding me. It was like yeah, I coach like soccer and stuff like that for my young daughters. And as I said, you just find out, you know, through the grapevine, it's like this person works with. Yeah, you know, I don't know what function of secret service but they work with secret service and it's like you gotta be kidding me this person yeah, well maybe there, to... be, there, maybe there could be like a, a tenure program to our say after 20 years of good service on the job then you get a hooker right. or <laughs> something along those lines you know <laughs> might get a reward for you actually want me to commit suicide on the fucking show Yes, I know. Well, that's what gets some good ratings there, Pat. We need that. You know, we we need that. Some at some point, if any of you are sick of life, if you want to just get a gun and blow your brains out on the air. Just kidding, Patrick. But by the way, only do it. That would be good, Alex. If that if one of us actually did that, you want ratings? You'll get ratings. Yeah, but I see. Here's the thing. What I'm saying is, if you're gonna do it, shut up, Doug. Doug, shut up. Get shut, right. shut up. Listen, other people are talking. Uh, 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 if you're going to blow your brains out, here's the rule. Do it on a Friday night when we do the video. Okay? <laughs> so. you gotta, you're going to monetize it. That's what I was thinking. I need to get this out. Right? Yeah, okay. You, you brought up the Secret Service and that shit, and what really, irritate, what really got under my skin about that is the loser-ass... Milwaukee Buck basketball fucking team that we have in Milwaukee yeah. was just bought by two hedge fund guys out of New York. Yeah. They bought the buck for five hundred million dollars. Yeah. A hundred million dollars more than they were uh, estimated to be worth. They pledged a hundred million dollars and so did the former owner a hundred million dollars to build a new fucking arena. You know who's got to pay for the rest of the arena, or they're hoping? Patrick. You. Yeah. Yep. You know what? <laughs> Fuck that. Serves you right. <laughs> <laughs> and it's just Patrick. They're not texting anybody else. They're going to make right, sure just Patrick. the whole thing. <laughs> so Lamont is going to bring all sorts of economic stimulus to downtown Milwaukee, Patrick. We've, we've yeah, had this discussion. You can't win. I know. I'll be in facetious. A high school team will beat them. I could beat him in the wheelchair one on one on five. Now that'd be the, the funny thing is, is that I'm involved with Oregon State, and one of the guys who bought it is an Oregon State alumnus, uh, and they're all proud of it. And, and I looked, and I'm like, oh, he works for For he, Fortress is his company. He's he's just VC scum. You know, uh, Seattle looking for a basketball team. Let him go to Seattle. Fuck it. I'm tired of paying for this shit. And then hookers, bullshit. <laughs> I want to know, uh, with regards to the, say, first lady, this might be too technical, but at what point did the office become so formalized in terms of the, the first lady has a secretary, a chief of staff? I mean, it's clear whether or not you just want to kind of be stay-at-home mom 
and tend to your kids at the White House. You step into the position and there's this huge infrastructure around you ready to, you know, roll you out across the world. Well, uh, Josh, when did that first start happening? Or did well, I don't, I don't know when they first had a staff. Um, I don't know if Mamie Eisenhower had a staff or not. I, I think the woman that modernized the, uh, the first ladyship would be Jacqueline Kennedy. And I also think television had a lot to do with that. Um, she also was probably one of the first uh, first ladies who was really very attractive. I mean, prior yeah. to that, you had uh, you had Bess Truman, who was you know as dowdy as they come, mm -hmm. and then prior to that, you had uh, Eleanor Roosevelt, that well, quite frankly, was not just another pretty face. And uh, I don't know what I don't know what Hoover's. Well, I, I'd have to say Michelle is a, is a close second. Well, Michelle's well, one of the more attractive uh, first ladies. Jackie was right. very attractive, yeah. and right. um, now, like you know, said, even I, I even even she... Laura Bush was kind of an attractive woman. Yeah, you know, but I her over a chair. <laughs> <laughs> right, <laughs> if she would let you. But, no. but like I said, <laughs> she wouldn't let me. She, uh, no, she. I, I want everybody to see who said that. That's Doug. Doug. See that? That's Doug. That's Doug. That's and we'll get W to paint a photo, a, a picture of. Huh? While Doug has Laura bent over the chair, we'll have W paint a, a picture of it. <laughs> hey, hey, Doug, what you need to do is, whenever you have time, put together a whole uh, show of Doug's greatest moments. Look, can I ask you this? <laughs> Let me ask you this, Josh. You're the historian. Does... George W. look like he's on the hooch again. <laughs> Have you seen his paintings? I don't know that he. Uh, yeah, well, no. I don't oh, know that oh. he ever looked like he was off. So. <laughs> I don't I tell. Huh? I tell you, it's a smart thing. He would be in a complete depression if he goes into his little studio. Even though his paintings are pretty hokey and not great, I think for his mental sanity, he goes in there and he gets in so deep in those paintings that. He's able to distract himself from the world because if he paid attention to the world, I won't believe that he'd be very but, happy. Then, this is happy. Not, so then this, it's like we're looking at. I'm, I'm, I apologize, but it's just like we're, you know, we're he's parading out these paintings. So that's like a, you know, like a retarded four-year-old did a painting. Now look at him. But you know. but hmm. this is not. Well, first of all, I just want to clarify too uh, with Jacqueline Kennedy I pointed out I said modernize the first ladyship so please don't take that to mean that there weren't first ladies with substantive impact before her or sure. that her impact was the greatest yeah when I say modernize I mean made it as it is today but what I wanted to say with relation to George Bush is this is not this is not new activity uh, uh, an ex-president uh, becoming reclusive and and literally keeping themselves LBJ. busy 24 hours a day I mean LBJ. for example well, he only lived a few years, but for example, yeah. uh, Herbert Hoover invented the ex-presidency. His most recent biographer has labeled him with that, and the fact that he lived for a very long time, mm -hmm. and uh, he wrote book after book after book. Uh, a matter of fact, when he died, uh, his mm -hmm. office was full of unfinished manuscripts. Um, he, I mean, he was he was a extremely busy ex-president. Mm -hmm. So there are other examples as well. Uh, we'll lo look at uh, Jimmy Carter. He has since surpassed Herbert Hoover. And I believe being the longest living ex-president ever, and I think also in writing books, uh, whether you like him or not, I mean, he just does one after the other. And my point of that is, is if I'm not mistaken, when Barack Obama is done, it will be very interesting to see what he does because he will be one of the youngest men yeah, to young. ever leave office, and he will have a chance to outlive even the number of years that Carter uh, served as a as a former president if he lives a long life. So it will be very interesting to see um, how he spends his uh, post-presidency and how he keeps himself busy. It must be very yeah. difficult to leave that position and then become, uh, as John Adams uh, said, uh, just a just a private citizen. You know, you, you, you really, you no longer matter. Yeah. You're, you're even less relevant than the vice president at that point. Maybe he yeah. can join the citizen panel. Yeah. Hey, listen, yeah. <laughs> Dave, would you do something for me? You're in so much in the dark right now. Could you turn oh, some sorry, light on? Turn on it. Yeah, so people can see a little better. Um, the light bulb problem? Uh, no, he just, he just, he just uh, you know, I think what happened is when we started the show, it was daylight outside. Yeah. And by the time we got to this part of the show, 
it's uh, it's nighttime, and he didn't realize he was sitting there in the dark. Uh, well, you, by the way, by the way, have you seen these ads that are running on TV? And I don't know why this suddenly became a problem. I, I, I have no idea. But about these people who have tw- a 24-hour syndrome, they're blind, and right. that blind people have a hard time knowing when it's dark, so they don't get these circadian rhythms going. I've and, seen oh, that, I've heard Alex. Yep. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. Uh, I never knew that existed until these ads. Mm-hmm. Is this like restless leg syndrome? I mean, that I never knew that existed until they did the ads for it. Mm-hmm. Like nobody, nobody ever had sleep apnea until they did commercials for it. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. Or that thing with the eye, the eye um, lubricant or whatever. Yeah. With that woman. Oh, who, right. What's that that's called, the weirdest right? one. Yeah. But here's the thing. Here's what I hate. I snore. Big deal. You know, I'm. Well. At my age, I'm lucky. I'm lucky. I'm breathing, right? I'm happy to snore. All right. Uh, And so when uh, I was at the doctor today, I said, you know, I feel tired all the time. And he said, do you snore? And I said, yes. And he said, well, I said, don't say it. He said, you might have sleep apnea. I said, no, I've asked my wife, do I stop breathing at any time when I'm because people who have sleep apnea, the person that sleeps with them gets really scared because they stop breathing for like 45 seconds and then they gasp and wake up and i've asked her she says no i wish you would stop breathing then i could get to sleep (laughs) and i tell you when my wife but but ever since ever since sleep apnea became this 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 uh problem du jour and everybody went out and bought these masks to sleep in so they sound like darth vader you know i have one one. do you have one yeah yeah did you it's a big uh it's a it's a tremendous insurance suck. You know, this stuff, these machines cost a fortune. And the, uh, the, the company that I went to, it's like a hotel. It's a gorgeous place. You get big flat panel screen TVs, huge beds, fans, air Oh, this is where they you tested it. you? This is where you go get your sleep test. Yeah, well, that, my, uh, my, uh, my wife had the sleep test. And you know what happened after the sleep test? Because they wanted to find out about certain sleeping. Because she couldn't, she never could get Very a full night's to- sleep. She could yeah, never get I, a full night's sleep. I get night depressed sleep. every night when my wife yeah, yeah. like starts breathing yeah. again. Shut up, Doug. Like, You've got to be kidding me. Doug. <laughs> I like uh, policy on you. Yeah. yeah. Anyway, uh, uh, she, uh, she went to one of those things, and after it was over, they never gave her a result. What? She called him up. What's the result? Well, apparently you don't sleep all night. What? You know, they well, came up. Why are you up for sound? I mean, you've got a harness of wires on. You've got goop all over your scalp. Yeah, and then they say go to sleep just like you would normally go to sleep. There's yeah. a camera right over your bed that's looking yeah. at you. Well, where's and- the porn for me to jerk off to before I go to sleep, okay? <laughs> it's tough to sleep, and you can't roll around too much because you got this big harness. But anyway, so did you get the mask that you suck oh, on? Oh, yeah. I've got, I've got the mask. I've got two machines because, again, they, they just throw this stuff at you. I finally stopped, and I said to them, no, I don't need another sleep at, you know, it's just they keep it's like I said, it's an insurance suck because they know you got insurance and they're going to cover it. So they'll have you in there every month. It's like you're checking into a hotel. Wow. So anyway, t- so do you still use this uh, br- my, uh, breathing sucking thing? I'm supposed to. I but I find it so hard to get used to. I went and, I, you know, they have what they call the, the nasal pillows. And uh, they, <laughs> that sounds like some kind of sexual position. Well, anyway, go ahead. Na- nasal yeah. pillows are, are, are the little things that like you see people wear, like if they're in the hospital or something like that, and they get those two little things and they put them right in your nose, like right here. Right. Mm-hmm. They call those nasal pillows. It's not the full mask. Like I got the mask that you wear and where you sound like Darth Vader. Right. <laughs> Yeah. And I got to the point where I was having trouble with this hose. It's off the end of this thing, and you, it, you, you know, you get tangled in it when you try to sleep. So I saw these pillows. I said, I want those, and the guy gave me a pair. Now think about this. When you have a hose of water, it's the regular hose, and say it's a half an inch diameter. Yeah. When you squeeze that down, right, when you squeeze that down, what happens? The water shoots out faster, right? Yeah. So they give me these these nasal pillows and they have a much smaller opening than the big thing that and so i'm like blowing my brains out here with these things in my nose i put them in and it's like 
<laughs> you can't talk and you, it's brutal. Uh, I mean, it is. And now, and now they're saying water. now, now go to sleep and get a good night's sleep. Yeah. Yeah. Exactly. You know, breathe right nasal strips. They they work for I think most people. I, I, I hate think. those things. I will really? tell you though, I, that's uh, like I wearing a you, you know that's like wearing a sleep condom. You know, it's like it, <laughs> well, it's like uh, it's know. it's. The, the... I will tell you though, if you do have sleep apnea, and I and I I know I have it to some degree. Well, they measured me and they told me every forty five seconds I stop and I hold my breath and it, and this happens every so often and all this. I do you do get a better night's sleep if you can sleep with the device on. That's the problem is sleeping with the device on. Yeah, yeah. Uh, well, can I, I can I interrupt? Sure, uh, Rob, Charlene. I had all that stuff too. And it is a big insurance draw. And what, what, you know, when I decided I can't deal with this anymore, I have to get rid of it. I called them and told them to come and get all this equipment. Mm -hmm. And they said, well, you'll have to sign a release because you know you can die if you don't use this equipment. I said, that's all right. I'll take my chances. I'll sign the release. <laughs> I'm out of here. Wow, and and how much how much did all this stuff? Of course, you were insured for it, right? Cost Rob? me nothing. Right. I didn't pay a nickel because no, I, my insurance covered it, but. You know, that's why they wanted me to keep it. It was like a surgical, right. I don't know, some sort of company, a third party, and they were making a ton of money from me having this equipment, yeah. and it was horrible. Well, exactly you know what, what, what you said, Rob. It's it, like Darth it, Vader. It, it became the di the disease du jour, and I, you know, I I have asked my wife, do I wake, do I stop breathing, do I wake up, you know, in the middle of the night or whatever, gasping or anything like that? And she says, no. You just sleep from one end of the night to the other. You know, maybe you get up once to pee and that's it. You know, so. only once. Wow. That's yeah. Well, good. you know, I think I think I've got to <laughs> go back on the old medicine again because I think uh, the old medicine is wearing off and that the Cialis is not working completely to take but care I of But I see problem. you drinking Starbucks coffee, which yeah, they just said had that. twice the caffeine, like at what eleven o'clock at night over there, and then you don't sleep. Well, no, I, I only get up once a night to pee, if that. Oh, wait a minute. Hold on a second. Uh, see, I love it because tonight it's TV night, mm -hmm. and people can see what Miranda just did. There it is. Darth there's, Vader. There's Darth Vader. Let's the, see if this works. By, just by, 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 by the way, Patrick, wait a minute. Oh, okay. Hit it. Nah. Patrick's getting in the right Boy, right hit, hit, Try it again. What? <laughs> mm. Uh, you just gave. <laughs> she has a Darth Vader like. doll. Right. right. <laughs> That's what you sound like. At what point did it become legal for these pharmaceutical companies to advertise on TV? Because now it would seem like the patient goes into the doctor and isn't like, okay, I haven't been feeling well. I need you to diagnose it. It's like the patient goes into the doctor and is like, Oh, I don't need you to check anything out. All I need you to do is prescribe this drug. I saw it on TV. I'm now the expert. Isn't it kind of uh, probably hindered uh, in terms of best medical practices that people are now going into doctors and requesting drugs? Ask your doctor about well, really? uh, doctors. Mean, doctors are actually. My wife would probably enjoy the four-hour erection. <laughs> Yeah, but we'll end up in separate bathtubs. Well, I, I liked what they say with Cialis. If if your erection lasts longer than th four hours, invite <laughs> another woman over. We well, uh, need a hammer. If you you don't call a Mark, call a Mark. Well, uh, we're talking about the CPAC machines. Um, the problem I CPAP, had, with, right. I, I had with the mask was, I would work for a little bit, and all of a sudden you would get. What I call the whoopee cushion effect. Yeah. <laughs> you got farting sounds coming out of that that were just <laughs> hilarious. And I would go back, I need another mask. Let me try that. You know, it's like, well, don't you have something that, you know, like I said, something like an Air Force, you know, flight helmet or something? Because none of this stuff is working. You know, I'll tell you how it would work and you'd be able to sleep really well if you can tie that CPAP machine in with Dave's little paraphernalia there, and you can use that to <laughs> vape. Because yeah. then you'd sleep like a baby. That sounds good. <laughs> how much is it just that as we get older, we sleep like shit? Uh, oh, you certainly do. It's not like it was when you're young. I mean, we're not growing anymore, so we're not, you know, our bodies are not tired. I know that when I exercise a ton, 
go on a like brutal hike with friends who are in better shape than I am, then I'll sleep really well. But otherwise, it, it's it, every year it's harder to get that eight hour straight sleep. Yeah. Yeah, well, I uh, I'm I'm pretty good at it, but I get up maybe a couple of times and I wake up a couple of times a night. It, it, the morning is the worst time for me because the sunlight starts streaming in, and I'm not really have been used to that in years. You know, my circadian rhythms are all out now. You know, um, and that's why and, you keep saying good morning at night, Alan. Well, you know, <laughs> I, I've been I've been thinking. You know, I, mean, I remember what they used to say. Like, I in some ways I, I wish I were blind because then I could smell everything better. You know, yeah. they always say, you know, you smell better if you. If, I, it, it, you ever really smelled the world around you? I don't you, know you that realize I realized you'd smell other people's shit. That's too. exactly <laughs> it. Exactly. That's the truth. I have a friend when I was in college radio who was blind. <laughs> And, well, uh, listen, my wife farts like you can't believe, okay? Because <laughs> what she does, I got to tell you this, she takes these, uh, she's had uh, um, uh, problems with um, uh, regularity. Uh, she can't go. So she she's always eating these, like, laxative gummy bears or whatever they mm -hmm. are, the fiber gummy bears. And occasionally she will just let one rip, all right? And, uh, and, and, and not tell me. She'll just start laughing like it's the funniest thing she's ever done. You know, hopefully not in a public place. Huh? No. Yeah, and, not in and, public and, place. And, like and, and, she, and she's got matches on her side of the bed just for this sort of eventuality. <laughs> what does and, Dave have there? And, uh, Bio K plus. This is what your wife needs. It what? comes from Revelstoke Jim's part of the world from Canada. And, and what is it? It's industrial strength, probiotics. Yeah. And. I've tried those gummy bears, the kombucha, all that stuff's okay yeah. for you. But this stuff, I really believe, is uh, they've isolated a couple strains of, of bacteria. And uh, this stuff is, is dynamite. Well, okay all, all I know is with my luck, I would go blind and she'd keep farting. You know, so <laughs> I, I really don't want that. You know, that would not be... Well, that, that, you know, that... That issue, though, is that's a major side effect of that oxycodone that she's on. Yeah. By the way, uh, Miranda, are you cooking oh, something yeah. tonight? Constipation. Uh, no. Because you constantly are going back to your kitchen, and I uh, the other night I noticed when no, you were doing that. No, I just that... wanted to get I wanted to get an alternate solution for you. What's that? A cork. <laughs> <laughs> Oh, these people are learning how to work for the visuals on Friday night to keep the video <laughs> audience like, happy. I do a costume change, too. So. <laughs> uh, <laughs> when, when, t when she passes gas under the covers, does it, like, get trapped under there and it's just, all, like, awful? Well, usually she's pretty good and lights a match, but uh, <laughs> uh, I'm worried the room will explode sometimes, <laughs> you know. But... Uh, I, 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 when I uh, I do it when there's nobody in the room, and it, when you first wake up in the morning, you know what happens when you go to sleep at night uh, is your intestinal system, your colon and so on, shut down. It's part of sleeping. It just shuts down completely. If you um, if you have anything bothering you with your stomach, if you can go to sleep, it stops bothering you because you it shuts down. Well, when you wake up, it wakes up. And what it's done is it's stored up gas for the whole night you've been sleeping. And all of a sudden you have that, what is known in the business as morning thunder. Which they, <laughs> you thought they called the tea that for nothing? So uh, just a little uh, advice about farting. Uh, have you ever noticed that, any of you, that uh, it, it builds up during the night? And there's nothing better, you know. Forget about napalm in the morning. The first fart in the morning is nothing like it, you know. You know what's awesome about You know what that is? It's the, it's the smell of victory. Anyway, what? Hey, you know what's great about being paralyzed? What's that? You don't get any of that. What? It, it, isn't, it isn't like a normal uh, way of doing things anymore. Well, so what, what, I never have that issue. No, oh, wait a minute. Now, you, you don't have a colostomy bag, do you? No. Uh, so you, you, you crap like the rest of us. Yes. So you must fart like the rest of us. No. <laughs> because all of the movement that I do, yeah. what's moving myself in the chair, transferring, yeah. it, it does it on a regular basis, but there's no sound. 
and because it's so often, nobody notices it. What do you mean so there's no sound? Because why would there be no sound? Well, wait a minute, wait a minute. This all offers a, a uh, life uh, 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 question that's been going on for centuries. If there's a fart in Patrick's bedroom, is there a sound? So it's a super silent but deadly? <laughs> no, and that's the thing. Because of, as often, the, the sound is, is rarely there. And it's just it, because I'm constantly moving. So it's yeah, a slow there's sleep. There's movement in his chair after he farts. Every time he farts, there's movement in his chair. So there's just like this steady stream? No, <laughs> no. It, it, and, and I don't even notice it, but what I did notice, like after the first year or so of deciding to become paralyzed, is I wasn't fighting like I used to. And then I realized that because of the constant motion and, and all the things that I do, that it just... So you're saying athletes then wouldn't either? What's that? You so see, you're saying if, if it's just constant movement, so athletes then don't either. Sure. You're going to sure. tell me athletes don't fart. Silence. Dead silence. Well, I, yeah, I, I mean, that, that would be the... Sport, but um, all I'm saying is... You realize where this conversation has gone just in the last hour? <laughs> hey, Charlie. Because I, I want to explain part. to the people who are listening to this for the first time, because they're watching the TV, but they've never heard the show. We start out at it, one point, and it just... We call it the ramble, because it rambles anywhere yeah, it wants to go. Not a half hour ago, we were talking about First Ladies of the United States. <laughs> And ramble all the way to farting. <laughs> and now we're into Patrick's farting habits and the fact that my wife is a killer. Okay. Well, now uh, we could combine those two. Uh, as any of the first ladies uh, been known to be flatulent or more flatulent than others, or I will tell gosh. you who I hear was hey. flatulent. Hey, the best. Do you remember? You remember the, the hey, artist in a movie? Doug, I'm talking. I'm talking, Doug. Sorry. Blazing saddles. I, I would be my form of vaping. Anyway, so go ahead. Yeah. Anyway, uh, <coughs> uh, uh, who was the uh, who was the actress who's who who uh, who's um, oh God, she was in Moonlighting, and she was uh, Shepherd. No, she was older lady. Uh, she, her uh, her uh, brother ran for president. God, oh God. Uh, the guy who was in the tank. Remember him? Oh, uh, Dukakis. Dukakis. Okay. Olympia Dukakis. Olympia Dukakis. Olympia Dukakis. Yeah. I talked to somebody who acted with her, uh. <laughs> and he said every she was known for one thing. Uh. God, I guess I could get could I get sued for this? Well, fuck her, because uh, she's still alive. That she could pass gas like nothing going, and that you'd be working with her on a scene, <laughs> and all of a sudden she'd pass one. <laughs> yes, Patrick. All right, I got a question for Josh. Mm -hmm. Has there ever been, aside from your caucus, a more fucked up campaign <laughs> to fight the president? Well, that's, uh, that's, that's a good question. I mean, that one just <laughs> took the case as far as I'm concerned. Yeah, there have been some people who made a real mess of their... Uh... Of their, their campaigns. Of their campaigns. I don't know. I mean, Sarah Palin was like one big giant Dukakis. Well, well the trouble was Dukakis. <laughs> uh, you know what it was? League, to begin with, you, you wonder how a guy uh, how a guy like Dukakis even got nominated in the first place. I mean, he wasn't what you would call the most attractive candidate all, of all time, and I had to remember that he even ran for president. I whip. think you could reflect back to the Boston Marathon. Everything from Massachusetts, they hit above their weight. Yeah. Well, but, there. Are, I mean, let's face it, though. There, there are certain years where, especially by the time um, of that era and now, there are just certain years where even when there isn't an incumbent, one political party or the other still feels like their chances are not what they should be in a particular election cycle. And I'm not going to say they mail it in, and they would certainly never say that publicly. Yeah, but uh, we live in a reality that says yeah. we can use that two or three hundred or four hundred and nowadays billion dollars. Yeah, far far better off four or eight years from now, and we're better off to spend it on uh, legislative races rather than a presidential yeah. race. So, so in, we know in, in, in his chance, Dukakis fell into yeah. that 
with you know Bush running the vice president. Reagan was yeah, very right. popular, mm -hmm. et cetera, et cetera. Well, that's kind of like uh, Bob Dole in '96, a little bit. Yeah. But, oh yeah, there are certain people that are sacrificed upon the altar. There's yeah. no doubt. Yeah, but I mean, I, all I remember is that stupid picture of him in the tank, right? You yeah. know, with the little cap yeah, hat right. on, the helmet on, and sitting there, and it just looked like a goofball. I mean, that was the worst photo op outside of John Kerry windsurfing yeah, suit or whatever. And uh, what's strange is now uh, it seems as if Putin does one of those kind of things just about every week. Yeah, but somehow he gets he gets he gets. Uh, he does it with his shirt off, and he's so manly. <laughs> well, he wields I, an iron fist. So. Yeah. You know what this is all about going on. Bit in of a Russia? difference. So do I, but for a different effect. Uh, somewhat of a conspiracy theorist. Yeah, and I think a lot of Putin's actions are just to keep instability, so oil prices are high. They are so reliant on yeah. high oil prices that sometimes yeah. i think that this military aggression yeah. is just to stir things up and keep oil above 100 bucks a barrel because if for whatever reason we had a collapse in oil down to 60 50 bucks a barrel i think the economy in russia would okay. really okay. get squeezed and now to it's completely no, it's worse than stuff yeah. that we've done so yeah. why not right? to completely yeah. to completely derail us doug has his hand raised <laughs> Okay. What what non sequitur now, Dan? Yeah, Doug? About, like the caucus, and the two things that got you know got him down was his wife Kitty being such a serious alcoholic, <laughs> and yeah, you know, and then the other thing with the Willie Horton. Thing, well, Willie Horton, uh, you know, spooky him. black guy. I mean, that's what got you know the caucus. Well, this that was more. And, and you you the tank thing yeah. too. Yeah, he looked like a complete fool. Wouldn't, in wouldn't the you tank say, Josh? Put on. Yeah, Josh, wouldn't you say that the Willie Horton thing was really just good politicking on the other side, finding an issue that really wasn't an issue, and then literally pumping air into it? Well, that's the, that was the name of the game uh, starting at around that time, maybe even a little before that, and it certainly still is now. I mean, yeah, it's no different than what you see. Um, and uh, that's that election certainly isn't my area of expertise. It's kind of a joke. Um, it's a little too recent for me. <laughs> but... Uh, but um, it's probably, and maybe I'm wrong, but it's not much different than, uh, you know, going and finding a goddamn sermon that uh, Obama's fucking preacher gave, you know, eight years ago that he didn't even attend and playing it on the uh, cable. You know, it's the same thing, right? I right. mean, who gives a shit what his preacher said, you know? Yeah, it's, it should there's be about what the candidate believes, not about what his uh, right. pastor Dave, who he you, you hasn't attended you church say? with in five years believes. Dave? Oh, I, I know it's a little non sequitur, but blending... Baseball and presidents, I got a question for Josh, is that even though I voted for Obama, one of the things that has always bugged me is that he'll go to Yankee Stadium and throw out the first pitch, and he's wearing that goddamn Chicago White Sox cap. It's like wherever he goes, <laughs> you would think that if you're invited to Yankee Stadium, you just put on the Yankee cap. And it's like Obama has got to flaunt this White Sox thing wherever he goes. What's this all about? You know, Josh, I respect that, take actually. it. And I'm a Yankee uh, fan. I respect that. Okay. <laughs> yeah, I was going to say, if uh, if it were me, they could kiss my ass. I'm president of the United States. I wear whatever fucking hat I want. I sure wouldn't wear yeah. a Yankees hat. So. Oh, well, 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 look okay, at Miranda. You have a, what is that, a cart? What? Look at Miranda. Look at Miranda. Oh, well, that's... Look well, that is baseball. Yeah, related, would you, but... Miranda, would you? I'm a Dodger fan, and is, what is that? L.A. Cap? Yeah, that's L.A. Dodgers. I'm a lifelong well. Dodger fan, and I would kind of be offended. Let's say he came to Dodger Stadium on a Vin Scully night, honoring Vin Scully, and he throws out the first pitch, and he brings a White Sox cap and and, yep. and wears that. To oh. me, that's just disrespectful. By the no, way, you know what? actually, I don't no. Think so, wait, 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 it shows wait, that he's a baseball fan and not just a you know a front runner. Yeah. He's not just yeah. there. And he's showing his colors, and I think that's cool. I, you know that the president's yeah. a baseball fan, and he's got a team. Miranda. I mean, he only Miranda, moved Miranda, to Miranda had, when he uh, went to, to, to Miranda, go to the University yeah. of Chicago to become for or, uh, professor. So Mar it's not like well, you know, how, okay. how many White how many, Sox, how many, man. How many how many Let's fans do the Yankees have? That it, and do that. But Miranda how had many, hey hey everybody. Miranda had something she wanted to say. Well, just with with the Dodgers, it actually. You know, that wouldn't be offensive at all. I, you know, I, being a Dodgers fan, you probably know that they share a training facility out in Arizona. You know, the Dodgers and, and the White Sox have, have had a friendly association for a very long time. 
No, okay. So, yeah. You know, okay, and, and I, as far as I'm going to Yankee Stadium, you know, come to Portland and wear that White Sox hat, please. Hey, he's showing that he's a he's a fan. He's behind his team, and even if Correct. he's in another stadium, he is yeah. showing he, his if, support. He, his, he's, okay. If you read uh, "Dreams from My Father," he talks about explicitly. You guys got to reference this, and this was an eye opener for me. He talks about the very first time he gave a public speech, Obama, and he said the feeling of one hearing his voice go out and come back just gave him what, such an what? endorphin rush that he realized that he needed to be in the public light and give more speeches. So sometimes I wonder, I, I, you know, I voted for this change. There hasn't been change. I was naive to believe that there would be any change. Right. And then, too, sometimes I feel like this presidency has been more about Obama than about the people who he was supposed to provide change for. And I think he's a little, honestly, a little, he's more egomaniacal than most presidents. Yeah, that's and why I they have really Toastmasters. Bad. What? So that's why they have Toastmasters. You know, I mean, you know, good speeches, you know, you know. Okay, who's well, the current they, Toastmaster of the United States? Ooh, good one. Obama. Huh? Say so Obama. He burnt everybody out the first year. Every day, Obama was given a speech, a press conference. I mean, Obama thinks he's the expert. He has, I have professors at UCLA who went to the White House for this big brain initiative, and Obama was talking to PhD researchers like he was give, delivering some well, sort no, of. Well, no, but here's, here's the problem. Here's the, yeah, pro here's the problem. Hold on a second. Yeah, here's, God, it, yeah. it, it, gonna, Doug, I'm talking, Doug. I'm talking. <laughs> Uh, here's the problem with Obama. He seduced America, and he thinks we still want to fuck him. You know, he thought that that whole he he was very seductive as a as a politician. I think that nobody could disagree with that, even Patrick. And yet, uh, he never he never had a second act. You know, it's like the guy who's got a great line and he manages to get women into bed once. But once they go, they're tired of him because he tries the same line over and over and over again, and they get a little tired of it. Basically, Obama kept has, to this day, kept giving the same speech over and over and over again with the same rhythm, the same speech patterns. And quite frankly, I, I get to the point where I can't even listen to him give a speech anymore. Well, yeah, it's kind of like, oh, another great historic Obama speech, yawn, you know. Yeah. He's the greatest speaker in the world. Okay, you know, wake me when it's over. Yeah. So, yeah. <laughs> I find Michelle much more inspirational. Absolutely. And I, I think she would have made, a, honestly, a better president because she has more of a backbone. And honestly, I think Obama's just a little, he's wishy-washy. I don't think he... It, He's not as good and uh, and pure as I think he claims to be. Not yeah. that he's a bad person, but I don't. I think that a lot yeah. of his ambition, as I think, is for yeah. personal. Well, you know, uh, Miranda, Mar Mar wait a minute. And Miranda had something she wanted oh, to say. Oh no, I, w I was just going to point out that anyone following up W has got to be a great speaker. That's well, <laughs> well I mean, yeah. yeah. <laughs> but but do you realize? Do you I, realize? What I was say was, and, uh, and I, we uh, were. I think we were all yeah. kind of lured into the notion that Obama was going to be a real transformational president. That you know all the stuff he was talking about. Believe that change is going to happen. Blah blah blah. And it's yeah. like Josh says, new boss, same as the old boss. Well, let me let me ask a question deal. here. Let me ask a question here of Patrick, for instance. Uh, uh, do you do you feel that he uh, uh, that he lost that seductive quality? I mean, you're 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 a Republican, and so you know. Well, did he seduce you, Patrick, in the beginning? <laughs> well, uh, uh, first, first I'll say what I was gonna say, and then I'll answer your question. Okay, what were you going because to say? Because it actually relates. Yeah. Your President Obama reminds me very much of Senator Palpatine before he took over the Senate <laughs> and became Chancellor and became Emperor. And it was, all, oh, there, she got a Star Wars yeah. shirt on. Wait a minute, wait a minute, hold on a second. Wait a minute, wait a minute, wait a minute. She wait a minute. Let me, just broke let, up with her girlfriend. She's uh, shaking her out a little bit there. Do you know something? How many costume changes, Miranda, have you made on this program tonight? Just the one. As, as soon after 
And she had Darth Vader. Vader. I oh, you had the hat. Yeah, and had the, she's got all kinds of props. Next week, I want you to all come prepared. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> I got my Yoda, but it, it, I'll bring my it, CPAP machine. Okay. There we go. <laughs> as far as um, President Obama being seductive, I will say this: um, he has never entranced me the same as President Clinton with his speaking ability. Mm -hmm. I mean, I understood the the draw to um, President. Well, actually, it would have been candidate Obama with his speaking ability and you know his ability to kind of meld people together but he never for me ever reached that level and still six years into the presidency had never reached that level of clinton well you, you know whenever something clinton yeah. would speak i would watch it if for no other reason because they was a damn good speaker well you know something somebody said that that uh, that uh, who's met clinton that he, when he meets people, tries to seduce everybody. By that he meant he doesn't want to screw them all, but he wants oh, he the, he, he, oh, he probably does. He, well, he, <laughs> he tries to he wants everybody to love him. He seduces them, and he's very seductive. And you know something? He's the opposite of Obama. He seduced us. He kept seducing us, and we st there's a certain we still love him. You yeah. you know there's something well, it, yeah, you that's... even have to admit it Patrick as a Republican there's something very seductive and very likable about it. Bill Clinton. I never denied it and any um, when he did the commercials with um, or uh, whether uh, Senior Bush or or W for the hurricane relief or whatever it was. Mm -hmm. See, I think Senior. I, I still enjoy hearing him speak because he's mm -hmm. got a talent for that. And he doesn't need a teleprompter. He doesn't need cue cards. I mean, the guy can go off the cuff, and he just he's damn good at it, regardless of party. So. And we know. I think the thing is, well, go ahead. Oh, I was just going to say, make a joke, just in terms of Fox has attacked that we don't know what Obama's grades actually are. But with Bill Clinton, we know he was a Rhodes Scholar, so we know he was vetted, so we know his grades were top of. Well, now my question is, my question is, look at look at George Bush. He goes against everything. He goes against the uh, seductiveness initially of a Barack Obama or the or the smooth qualities of a, a, a and the presidential qualities of say a, a, um, a, a Bill Clinton. How did George Bush get two terms? I never could well, figure that out. He did debate Al Gore, if you recall, was a shocker. How did he win those debates against Al Gore? Well, no, but that that was in uh, women. Was that the, that was, was the, that, that was the first yeah. election? Mm -hmm. But but that was supposed to be Al Gore is so much smarter yeah. than Bush, and he should clobber it. And well, man, it, no. people we, came we, away. We we, we got we got two hands yeah. here. Got two hands here. In fact, we got three. So first, let's go to Patrick. Well, I think Miranda had hers up first. Oh, okay. Miranda, put you had yours up first. Okay. Um, <laughs> it, I, I think it's really simple how Bush got reelected. You know, we were in the middle of a military action, mm -hmm. you know, a freaking war, and you don't change quarterbacks at halftime. Yeah. Okay. How about you? Do you agree with that, uh, Patrick? That was exactly what I was going to say. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. And uh, 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 and Doug will now take a non sequitur. Yeah. yeah and did make it, it to <laughs> yeah Miranda and Patrick there, but like during their first debate, where it was like I think it was the you know, actually not the first debate, but there, during the debate, so it was the second debate where like Al Gore like kind of like walked up to Bush and kind of like looked at him and like tried to challenge him, and Bush looked at him sort of like what the fuck are you doing here, <laughs> invading my space? I think you know to me it's sort of like, Good God Almighty! You know, yeah, yeah. I mean, I, you know that. I, I I had no respect for Al Gore after that. Okay, let me let me do the tally so far. We started off in the hour talking about first ladies. We went to farting, <laughs> and somehow we wound up now talking about uh, about the, the seductiveness of presidents. Well, at yeah. least you didn't go to Albert's like show from yesterday for like naming his shit. <laughs> Poops. So you're so you're, you're you're way above that. Well, I was going to do that, but I heard that he did it first, so I decided yeah, not to do it. Yeah, didn't want to take his mojo. There. You, you didn't want to be number two. Well, you know, I what I I'll tell you what. Uh, <laughs> bravo, bravo. 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 
no, I am. Um, um, uh, I guess I become kind of the elder statesman of Gabnet, so I have to maintain a certain amount of dignity. Uh, so we only go as far as farting. We don't actually. We don't. Ex we don't go Gabnet. to the complete expulsion of uh, feces. Does that make sense at all on any level? Okay. No, but you run a cleaner show. I, I have dignity. Get it? What? Quietly. <laughs> uh, Mark, you've been a little quiet there down in I'm Naples. Just, I'm just taking this all in. It's like, you know, our presidents, they should just be statesmen. I find nothing. It, it, it's amazing when I hear people, yeah. women talk about, oh, Bill Clinton. And I'm like, really? You know, yeah, I'm... it's a power thing, I guess. Yeah. Now, what I want to do is next week when we have the TV again, I want you two guys, you and Rob, to both bring your CPAC machines. It's <laughs> <laughs> buried somewhere in the back of my closet somewhere. Okay. You know, well, if you can if you can find the if you can find the porn, you can find your CPAC machines. Yeah, okay. Yeah. Well, the porn's all on the internet now, anyway. So yeah, who needs? What's amazing. the latest and greatest for free porn on on the internet? Uh, just go to any one of the um, of the uh, torrent sites. Oops. Yeah. You, uh, oh, so you download uh, it? You don't uh, stream. Uh, you, you download and I, I sure hope that's not on the Gabnet server machine. No, yeah, no it's not. The Gabnet <laughs> server machine is a completely different machine. I like you porn and things like that. That's where you get That's what I porn. said. You porn and my friends are like, man, you're dated with you porn. I was like, well, where should I go? Well, like, just I want to know. I, I, you know, it's that's getting like a little eight, late because so we, 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 we've only got about a minute and a half here before I got to make way for Jim. But I, uh, you know, that brings up a whole different subject. I've got to write down and remember uh, how in the world does the porn industry make money anymore? Because they, I know nobody who pays they put for it. Recurring billing, and you got and they make uh, yeah, no, the little the yeah, little five minute cards. things. They have advertising on there, but I don't really care about that. It, but uh, yeah, I just don't. You know, I just don't see how they really make any any real money. Hey, listen, here. you know okay. what? Uh, I think we've actually uh, run out of time here. Oh, uh, yes. Exhausted. I mean, we we exhausted uh, our yep. conversation and everything, it's and this has been a lot of fun. It's gone by fast. It's been fun. Party's Lots over, of Alex. yeah, the party's <laughs> over, Charlene. Thanks to uh, Miranda. Always nice having you here, Mark Thorner. Always good having you here, Rob, the voice of uh, of Gabnet, who all weekend long, starting tomorrow night, will be hosting uh, his very own program, which is the uh, Gabnet Rewind, in which he takes each of our shows and. Makes them into a spectacular couple of hours uh, showing people what went on that week. So if you didn't catch everything, good time to do it. Charlene, thank you. Dan Meyer, Doug Dupuy, Josh Wheeler, always a pleasure, Josh. Patrick, always the point man here. Uh, and uh, uh, Portland Dave, thank you, too. Thank you all for being here tonight. Have a good night. And, 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 and also, have a good weekend. Happy Easter. Okay. Happy okay. Easter to everybody. And I'm Alex Bennett. We'll see you again uh, on Monday. Uh, but stay tuned for Revelstoke Jim over most of the same station. In the meantime, as always, if you see her, tell her I love her. Okay. Okay.